David versus Goliath comes back to the country. That's powerful. Hey everyone, this is your host, Gabriel Buelna with Buelna News. It's uh, 2021 here. There's been a lot that's happened since the 2020 season here at Buelna News. And and um, we have a lot of shows that we've recorded and we're going to be um, releasing to the public. So before we start, um, you know, join us and, and press the subscribe button down, down below. But before we start, let's go over some of the stuff that's been happening in the country. So since last last time we spoke, um, there was another president, uh, Donald Trump, and now we have Joe Biden, who's the president. Um, we had an attack on the Capitol by white right wing uh, Republicans. Um, you had uh, Donald Trump impeached once more. Um, you had uh, you have an immigration bill that's going in, in the House. So there's a lot of stuff going on. But here at Buena News, we're going to start this season with an interview with, with Chueco from one of the co-singers from De California. And we're gonna be talking about a lot of issues, a lot of, but the focus is, is the issue of race and, 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 and with specifically around Chicanos, Mexican-Americans, Latinos, and his perception of race and how that's influencing music and popular culture today. So for the hour we have today, Chueco from De California. Welcome, Chueco. Saludos, Raza. Saludos. Saludos, Raza. I'm glad to be here, you guys. So before we, we before we start, uh, Chueco, um, we want if, if you're new to Buena News, click on the subscribe button below. Um, check out all of our, 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 our videos. Um, we try to hit a lot of issues related to, to issues of race, ethnicity within the Mexican-American, uh, Chicano, Latino communities. Uh, but it, we're going to have these discussions, and one of those bands that 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 that's out there, that what's interesting, I'm going to say uh, is say hit 40 million views on YouTube uh, today. Okay. Bam. Um, yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> Trico. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. No, that's that's dope to hear, right? Como te estaba diciendo, right? We don't really count, uh, you know, our views, and you know what I mean. Who has the time to do that, right? So just to have. You know, you sort of vocalize that out loud. Forty million. Wow, that's 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 pretty dope for an in independent another, artist like ourselves. You know. Let me give you another statistic: sixty-three thousand views per day. You're hitting. I mean, you know, you're you're wow. you're, you're you're hitting. But let, let me give a context to our, to our viewers. De California, and and I'm gonna, Treco is going to uh, describe it for you. But you know, yep. uh, Treco, give us um, what called um, you know, where'd you go? Where'd you where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to college? <laughs> Ah, uh, so wow. So I mean, just or did you, you know, go to college? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So, like you said, right? I'm I'm one half of the group de California, right? So uh, I was born in LA, uh, South Central, to be exact. Mr. B was born in Compton. Uh, we met in junior high at Edison Junior High, and since then we've been homies. Uh, we grew, and, and honestly, right? We didn't do music then. We were more into, I'll be honest with you, at that point, we were, you know, doing dumb shit, jacking and going to stores and stuffing our pants with pants and running out, like, you know, dumb shit, right? But it, it, it was at some point, you know, he went to, I think, to a trade school to become an iron worker. I went off on a path to, you know, to try to go off to college, right? I didn't have the grades to go straight to college, right? I, I, I actually flunked the 10th grade because I just didn't want to wear the PE clothes, right? Not because I was a dumbass or anything. I just, you know, chose that year not to dress and I got a fail. So I ended up, you know, having to take the 10th grade again. Right. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? Like I, I, at some point, right. That led me uh, to junior college. Uh, and then I, I got it there. Right. I got grades that, you know, eventually, yeah, led me to a university where I graduated and it was really at the university, honestly, uh, right. I had a job as a lifeguard, right. During the summer, I didn't want to come back home because, you know, it was just coming back home to the ghetto. Boring. So I ended up staying in a dorm room there. But there was a job that they had posted for a, a, a RA or TA, I forget what they called it, but somebody who just basically took care of the building and of the summer campers that would show up during the summer because we had people coming in from other countries during the summertime to just go visit, I guess. So anyway, I was just there and I happened to be the lifeguard and there being so bored just watching people, I just started writing. Uh, and that's how it's actually started with me. Right. And then I, you know, and then it blossomed them into me talking to B about it. And then we got the group together, but yeah, it's just, yeah, but that's how it started, bro. Trickle, what, what, did, what did you get your BA in? 
uh, sociology and Chicano studies, my boy. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I got yeah, my so Chicanos as well. Yeah, you know, and people are surprised at that, right? That, 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 you know, number one, that I graduated or that I'm actually, you know, rapping, right? Like, you would think that, like, okay, you, you know what I mean? Like, why you, you graduated? Why are you even rap? Most people, I think, associate rappers with thugs or, you know, what have you, uh, right? But at, at our level, right, at our point, you know, we're not doing this for the fame. We're not doing this for anything other than really, you know, putting Raza on the map in a different spectrum. You know what I mean? When it comes to hip hop, we get no respect. When it comes to the music industry, we get no respect. When it comes to even the Latin Grammys, we don't get no respect. It's all about reggaeton, right? Like you never hardly ever hear about any Mexican rappers in any Latin Grammy show, right? So it, it was really about, you know what? Okay, we got our chips right now, Mr. B. We, we could afford to actually do this ourselves, right? We don't need a label. Let's put our money where our mouth is. You know what I mean? Let's do what we do and let's do it. Go hard, go hard for Raza. And let's see where it takes us. And so, here you go, bro. Now, now it took us to a, an interview with you guys. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Well, you know, one of the things that 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 brought us to to you or us to connect was your, your, your some of your ideals. And, and we're going to get to them. But I want to lay the foundation. Dr. Juan Gomez Quinones, who who just passed away, and and we just did an interview with Dr. Alvaro Huerta, who who um, on Latino and Latino communities. I'm going to lay the I'll read something very quickly because you you touch on this on a regular basis. I'm going to read what Dr. Juan Gomez Quinones and, and Alvaro Huerta put together. Anti-Mexicanism. U.S. anti-Mexicanism is a race premise set of historical and contemporary ascriptions, convictions, and discriminatory practices inflicted on persons of Mexican descent long-standing and pervasive in the United States. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that a core, is that, is that something that you're fighting? It, it appears you're articulating with your, with your music, Arriba Mexico, and, and it, tell me about that. And, 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 and what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, no, well, again, right, Arriba Mexico, which is, you know, one of the leading tracks um, on YouTube, right, with I think 7.7 .7 million views on, on that video. Um, yeah, that's the message, right? It's like if my, my first lyric, right, uh, Arriba Mexico, Pura Sangre Mexicana. That lets you know right off the bat, right? Like, I'm Mexican. Yeah, I was born here, right? I was born in L.A., but my dad is from Michoacan and my mom's from Veracruz. So I don't care how you label me, right? Latinx, all this other shit that you want to call me. I'm Mexican. You know what I mean? Like, and you have to give me respect for that. Like, okay, the border didn't cross me, right? Like, the border crossed us. I just happen to be born on this side of the border, but I'm Mexican, right? creciendo la tropa, hierba buena flota, la verga la chota. Prendan esa moda, suben la de California. Esos vatos traen pura música mamalona. Uh, and, and yes, right, so having to fight through all that as, as a kid, right, number one, growing up in South Central, as you know, it's a, at that time, when I grew up in South Central, it was a black neighborhood. So we Mexicans, we used to get picked on by the black folks. Let's just call it what it is, right? We used to get bullied. That led to us having to essentially form gangs, right? We had to form a group of us, right, to say, you know what, we're gonna, if we're going to, because it, it was funny, right, I used to live on, when I was a kid, really, you know, really, I used to live on Manchester, uh, but I used to live on the side of the, of the Hoover side, right, it was, you know, passing uh, 85th, and then on the other side, it was the Nine O's, but I used to go to Bethune, and every day, right, I had to cross the Nine O's, who simply because I lived on that side of Manchester, assumed that I was a Hoover crip, and would try to jump us, so every single day, that I had to walk home, right? We had to figure out a way on like, okay, do we want to go this way or that way? So we just, that sort of sentiment of like Latinos, Mexicans sort of being bullied and picked on by other races, that has been embedded in me from, you know, since I'm growing up, right? And not because I read about it, I lived it, uh, right? And then once you get educated, right? Then once you go to college and you realize that, oh shit, this is systematic, right? This is not just in South Central. This is happening in every hood, in every, you know what I mean? You still hear stories now, right? Where people go into black uh, or into Latino communities just to jack them, right? Just to steal their shit because they know they're immigrants and they're not going to call the cops, right? So th there's this image out there by everyone, I would say, you know, white society, black society, that Mexicans really are something that you could pick on, including the president, and you can get away with it. Right. So 
I'll be honest with you, when Donald Trump was elected, that definitely inspired me to write some shit, uh, right? And I wrote four songs, right, that I dedicated to him. Every single year that he was president, I wrote a song, uh, right, and I dedicated it to him, uh, right? But it was his mentality, right? It was, it was the fact that he was able to go downstairs and his first speech, right, call out Mexicans, like straight out, like he just, and, and, and for that to then be the crying, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that then motivates white people to then join him and his cry to build walls and again, continue this, you know, sort of rhetoric of, you know, Mexicans are cool to fuck with. Well then, you know, me and B just took that and just ran with it and said, you know what, fuck that. Let, let, you know, music, freedom of speech. That's one way we can definitely counteract this whole myth and music. You know, and so that's what we do, bro. I mean, us painting our faces and doing what we do is not. Yes, we, we love being Mexican. We go hard. But it, in a way, it's putting it in your face. Right. Like when you see me in a video or on stage or on anywhere. You're going to see a skull, right? A Mexican skull. That Mexican skull is already going to tell you, oh, shit, these are Mexicanos right there. These, these are me. You're not going to confuse me for a Cuban or a Puerto Rican or like, you know what I mean? Like a Latinx. You're going to see me on stage and be like, oh, shit, he has a Virgencita shirt on with a skull face on. That's straight up Dia de los Muertos. That's Mexican right there. You don't get more than that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that's why we, that, that's why we do it, bro. No, no, no. That, that, that's very important. So you, you're making distinctions because as, as Latinos, there are 60 million Latinos in the United States. 41 million are, are Mexican, are Mexican-American in California. 40 percent Mexican-Americans are 30 percent. Right. There but go. there yeah. is this there is this it seems to be this specific issue and, and and we're again, we're having the discussion of anti-Mexicanism specifically. Is it? Are you seeing an anti-Mexicanism or an anti-Latinoism? Is it specifically targeted for us? And what are you seeing? Because you're rapping about it, so you have an opinion. Yeah, no, no. I again, I feel and I sense an anti-Mexicanism, right? Like it's a no. I, I don't see hear the president walking downstairs and attacking Cubans or Puerto Ricans or any other, right? Like, oh well, he, I mean, he does the MS, I guess, right? But. Beyond he did that, right? like he specifically, and yeah, he specifically calls out Mexicans, right? When he talks about the border wall, right? He's specifically talking about a certain part of the country, right? He's not talking about Canada, right? Like a bunch of Latinos and white uh, uh, folks coming through there, right? But so, yeah, there's this whole notion, right? We feel, right, that when people are talking about Latinos, what they, who they're really talking about, right, are Mexicans. Right. Like, because, yeah. And, and again, that's part of the, the I guess the problem, right, that, yes, no, you know, we all sort of get lumped into the, this whole one bucket of all either us all being Latino or all of us being Mexican. And I know we're not right. I know we have even within my family. Right. I we met, you know, I have uh, people from El Salvador and all that. So uh, that we married into not that are part of my family. But you know what I mean? Like it's uh, so I get all that. But, yeah, we do feel like even. You know, even within uh, within music, right, within hip hop, it is our Mexican culture that that gets exploited and we don't get and we don't get any credit for it. Right. Like, you know, for YG to get up there and do a video with mariachis and all of that, that's all good. But, you know, th he doesn't do shit for the Mexican community. He doesn't he doesn't even he wouldn't even sign a Mexican rapper. He wouldn't even deal with a Mexican. Right. Uh, business aid. But he has the the. I guess the ability to dress himself like a mariachi and, and every, and he's cool with it. Right. Like low riders, right. That whole culture of low riders. And that came from East LA, right. That, that all came from Whittier Boulevard and that whole culture of us not having the ability to buy brand new cars. So we built our old cars and made them jump and, and painted them and made them beautiful. Right. But if you look at hip hop today, you would think that the black folks invented hello riding at Crenshaw or, you know, from the movie NWA, right? Like there's no, even within the own black community, right? There's no, I, I would say Tupac was the only rapper black that ever understood that Mexicans played a bigger role in LA than anybody ever gave us credit for, right? He was the only one, in my opinion, that ever understood that if he got Mexicans and blacks together, he would be a force to be reckoned with. And he did, right? And that's why I ultimately he was killed. But what he, did Tupac like, he's do? the first that I've ever seen. No, nobody since him, including Snoop and everybody, has reached out to the Latinos since him. And, and since he's gone, right? It, again, we went back to this sort of status quo of 
ah, Mexicans. I mean, even now, right? Mexican rap is considered less than. Right. It's going to we're, we're even a Mexican rapper. Like you even have our own people saying, oh, you know, me, Mexicans shouldn't rap. But like, like but it's a black thing. Like to us, I'm like, wait a minute. What rhyming? Right. Rhyming is a black thing. Me telling you a story or something. Right. Like that's a black thing. Like, nah, that's crazy. Like, nah, we're going to rhyme and we're going to do it our way in Spanish and in English. And guess what? We're going to bring in live instruments from our culture and we're going to do it better than you. So, right. So, so that's sort of the sense that we have, the pride that we bring into the music. What, what is what is Mexican hip hop specifically? Is there a difference between Mexican-American Chicano hip hop? I'm going to lump the Mexican-American, the Chicano mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. and Mexican hip hop from Mexico. Nah, bro. I, nah, nah. I, again, we're talking, right? I would say they're stealing from us. Right. Like if you see Who all the hip hop us? that Mexico and, and, and that you hear all them doing like the beats, bro, they're, they're all fucking trap beats or they're all stuff that we did in the 90s. Right. Like they are just, again. Right. Again, I don't blame them for doing it. They are actually doing it better. Right. Like they are actually collaborating and working with each other and building a movement in Mexico that I again, we don't have here in the United States. Here in the United States, it's dog eat dog, right? We're all trying to do it ourselves and we don't have that unity that they have in Mexico. But as far as what they're doing, if you listen to their sounds, if you listen to their beats, if you listen to all that shit, listen to our album, Crooked Manifesto or uh, Relic the Lyric that we released in 2001 and you will hear all that, right? You will hear all those beats and that aggression and all that. Yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, power, more power to them that they are. But Remix. honestly, bro, like the Mexican culture, the hip hop, it was it's, cool. it's its own thing. I, I would put it in its yeah, own bucket because we're not like it going. We're not, we work with East Coast rappers all the time and we're not like them, right? We don't rap about the same shit. We don't, you know, we just have different perspectives, right? LA, the music, something about, from our perspective, right? LA has always brought out something, right? Like Aquid, right? Like they were the first if you consider to be considered banda rap even though they were not the first like we were doing banda rap when they came out i know 10 other bands in la that were doing banda rap they just happened to be the ones that got signed right and got the notoriety for that but even that that was also something that came out of la right the chicano rap as you call it that came out of la and then that blossomed into the world right like japan bro if you look at japan and other countries they glorify our culture they like they, they not like only just like it or listen to it bro, bro they, dress up, they dress like us they they put on the, the the dickies and the white shirts and they emulate the culture you know what i mean so Bro, that, that's what I mean. That LA, it's in its own bubble, bro. Like you cannot put us and be like, oh, you're you're next, you're like uh, like right now Houston, right? Like they might be, you know, considering themselves blowing up with the whole tropeando culture or you know whatever. Like okay, you got your own little bubble, but that no, 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 you're, you're not gonna compare yourself to the LA culture and all of that. Like essentially, all that led to what you're essentially building where you're at. You know. So Treco, part of the reason for for the question is 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 whether you want viewers and listeners to understand and move and to understand something specifically throughout your music. And what is that something that you're trying to motivate your viewers through your rap? I would say that, um, that me and Mr. B just want, I mean, we, we just feel prideful to be in a position that we're in right now, right? We're Mexican American. We grew up for, and we were able to, somehow succumb all those odds and be at a point where we're at now right so we look at that and we're like you know what all this craziness that you hear about mexicans it's all it's all smoke and mirrors right like it's 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 not only beautiful to embrace your culture but we have a beautiful culture we have something beautiful to offer right like, so so yes right in a way right like they always ask me, and maybe this is a roundabout way to answer your question, right? But, but it gets to that, right, on, on why we do it. But they always ask us, like, why, why do you guys do it? Why do you guys rap? Like, why, you know what I mean? You guys went to, you know, you, Chuckle, you went to college. Like, you know, you have a six-figure job. Like, you don't need this. You don't need to rap. My response to them is, name me one Mexican rapper that has gone to any level in any, in any sort of, you know, worldwide notoriety. Right? Name me one Mexican rapper. They all start to list Cypress Hill. Nope, not a Mexican, Puerto Rican. Pitbull, nope, Cuban. Who else? Name me one, name me one. They can't name me one. No one can name me one, 
right? So, so until somebody is it right, like our culture, right? You, you, you mentioned all those statistics, right? As far as Mexican Americans here in this country, right? Like for uh, nobody to be able to name not one Mexican rapper that you can be like, oh, okay, yeah, they they elevated, you know, not only themselves but their culture and you know what I mean, Mexicanism to a level that has never like you can name one, bro. So until you can name one, me and B are on a mission, right? Like because it may not be us. It may not be us, but it may be somebody that's following us, right? Or maybe somebody that's next to us, or maybe somebody, because you see it all over, right? It's not just us. Here in Cali, you got Snow the Product, you got King Little G, you got us, you got a whole slew of other Mexican artists that are doing it on their own and are essentially, right, doing what we're doing, putting Mexicans on the map and saying, you know what, labels, we don't need you. You've disrespected us all these years, right? N now we don't want you. We're going to do it ourselves and we're going to show you how you could have done it, but we're not going to do it, right? And we just, I mean, I think people would sort of gravitate to what we're doing because we just put it in your face, right? Like, Again, right, that we put on our faces and our mascaras and our, we paint our skulls, right, uh, as skulls because we want to put it in your face, right? Our music is hard and we go hard with the lyrics. Like, we don't mute anything. We don't, you know, censor anything, right? Uh, again, you mentioned one of our songs, Coca and Marijuana, right? Like, it, it's just hard, right? So even it, it's a trend, right? I get emails from people, uh, right, about their son, right, from a son telling me that, my dad bumps your music, bro. Like he loves your music. And so to me, I'm it, it's right. I'm trying in my mind, I'm trying to attract him, right? Like the younger generation, but we're attracting an older generation, right? An older crowd, because I think a lot of them sort of felt and have gone through this, you know, the, what we went through, right? Like, okay, Mexicans were sort of secondary and, you know, that's okay. But now they see somebody being prideful of being Raza and they're like, oh shit, yeah, I can relate to that all day. And so, you know what I mean? So here we are, but, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I are you say, trying to, are you trying to break through a ceiling that, that it, it appears to be? Stereotypes, bro, yeah. yeah a stereotype. Stereotypes, any ceiling, anything, any, any box you would have put a Mexican in, we're going to break that shit. That's why, and, and I'm sorry to apologize, guys. I don't know if I should. Let me know if you want me to not to. But no, in the nutshell, right, like, that's why we do music the way we do, right? Like, we do banda. We do cumbia. We do hip-hop. We do, uh, sometimes we mix in reggaeton if we want to. We do salsa, right? We do, we do it all. Right. Like, so again, right. Like we're not going to let you number one, define us Mexicans, right? Like Mexicans don't just do banda. Mexicans just don't do Chicano rap. Mexicans just don't have bald heads and rolling low riders. Right. Sometimes we pick up a tuba and like to hear some banda all fucking night. Right. Like, so, so, so yeah, bro. Like it's part, it's, it's, it's all that, right. It's us breaking any stereotype that you may have had. You see the California and you see every stereotype broken. So you know triple. what I mean? Because again, just through our music, just through our music, you, you, again, you're not going to put us in a box. You're not going to tell us, oh, the California, you're banda rap or so, you're hip hop or you're this. No, we do it the, all, bro. In the discussion about about race in the United States, one one mm -hmm. writer from from UCLA, um, Dr. Uh, Laura uh, Gomez, talks about Mexican Americans specifically having to deal with two levels of colonization. You know, first we dealt with the Spanish colonization, then we dealt with with American racial systems. We're talking about Mexican Americans specifically being quieted, not allowed to be participate in something. Are you trying to tell Mexican Americans specifically to do what? To speak louder? And, and what's your opinion about these different layers of, of racism, specifically against Mexi Mexicans? Yeah, no. So I would say, right, to answer that question, I would say I would, what I'm trying to tell Mexicans is yes, because you're right, right? Like, even till this day, we go to Mexico and people in Mexico tell us that we're not Mexicans because we were not born there, right? So, even in Mexico, there's still that, no, 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 you're Chicano. You're, you're not Mexican, you're Chicano, just because you were born on that side, right? You're Chicano. Even though, as I said earlier, my mom is from Veracruz and my dad is from Michoacan and the only blood that runs in me is straight up Mexican. Like, no, I don't have no half German or none of that. Straight up Mexican. Even I still get categorized by my own people, right, as not being truly Mexican, right? So... In a way, yes, right? We're trying to build that, not nah, Chicanos. Yeah, uh, number one, you're not going to put me in that Chicano box, right? Like, because that, that number one Chicano box is beautiful, right? But I'm going to now blow that box up, 
right? I, and I'm going to make that now beautiful. What you thought was a stereotype, what you thought was a spit, what you thought was uh, something bad, now I'm going to make it beautiful, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, every culture that you have embraced, that you have stolen from us, I'm going to take it back, right? I'm, we're going to own it, right? We're going to so now own the fact that we're Chicanos living in California and we're Mexican, right? Like you're not going to take that from us. And there's people here in the United but, States Trekko, that think that, you know, Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what I'm getting from you is that, in fact, Chicano culture is is leading Mexican and Latin American hip hop, because what I'm hearing from you is and especially the way you're using imageries of culture, religion, um, multilingualism. What I'm hearing is Chicano culture is leading Mexican hip hop and they are using. So we have here in the United States, we've used that kind of double colonization that, 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 that Ms. Gomez from UCLA talks about, we've, we've kind of repackaged it, sent it back to Mexico. Mexico is now using it. A lot of the artists are making money over there, but mm-hmm. Mexican-American Chicanos over here aren't getting that recognition for being the core of it. There you go. That, 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 that's, bro, I don't know how you sum, summarized it or everything, but that's exactly right. Right. That, that's exactly right. Like, and even right. It's because it is crazy how we go out there, right. We're from LA. We go out there and you are wearing an LA hat, a Dodgers Jersey. And, but you're saying I'm not Mexican because I came from LA, but you're wearing our shirt. You're wearing our hat. You're rapping, right? Like you're doing all these things, but you have the nerve to tell me or put me in some sort of like, whatever, that I'm somehow less than you, even here in Mexico, because I was born over there, but then you have the audacity to have, again, right? You, uh, you, people can look for themselves, right? You look at a Mexican rapper, they are more than likely wearing LA gear, Lakers gear, Dodgers gear. Like it, it, it's, it's our culture, right? That they emulate it. So yes, right? To a certain point, not only to Mexico, but to folks here in the United States, we're making that point that you just made, right? That again, no, you know, yes. Right. You, you can't take it from us. Right. And then claim it and then somehow make us less than like, nah, 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 nah. you took that from us. We're going to all recognize that and, and we're going to build from it again. But th- there's no hatred here. Right. It's just no, it's, it's just a- putting it in a point where you're like, no, let's just own the fact that, yes, you, you got that from here. That's great. And if you want to work, like we can still do that, but let's just all recognize that again, right? That whole culture, everything you're doing, everything you're making money out of, right, came from somewhere. It did. Right. That, that hip hop did not was not born in Mexico, right? Like let's just call that a fact. It wasn't, right? So like you, you got that from somewhere, and you and YouTube was the morally like resource, and you started right doing your own, right? And but again, we don't get respect for that. Not only from Mexican rappers, definitely don't recognize that. U.S. rappers, definitely, you know, we talk about it, but again, no one hears us here because we don't have a platform to be heard yet. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, it's a constant struggle where we are trying to still, even in the eyes of our own people, you know, sort of rebrand ourselves and actually prove ourselves that, you know, we're, we're worthy, right? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, and part of me summarizing that is for, is for you know, young, you know, Chicano and, and any other Latino and anyone else who's watching it, not having to be apologetic about the Chicano yeah. rap, and and what's interesting, and and now and I'll get to Arri- um, in, in in Arriba Mexico. It's it's interesting. Um, you you bring up the issue or 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 B of mm-hmm. betrayal or jealousy by some you know hoping to bring down da- in, in to bring you down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, I, I think what did B say? You know, don't be a Mexican mm-hmm. hater. Yeah, well, basically, yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you don't want to see your Mexican brother, you know, get ahead, right? Yeah. Where did that yeah. come from? That that was a powerful statement in that song that I was uh, that I was not taking a back back, but I was I was surprised. I'm not no, back. again. It just goes back to us, sort of that. I don't know what it is with with Mexicans, right? <laughs> I mean, I love my peeps, but but sometimes my peeps are our own worst enemy. My peeps will hate you first before they love you. Let, let's, that, that's just a fact. I don't know what it is, right? But yes, right. Like we get we get hate on, right? Like and, and it, it for, I don't know for you know we speak English, we speak Spanish. People hate that. The fact that we're not picking one, I guess people hate that. So yeah, no, the, the fact he's basically calling out that sense that we, we know we get it. We, you're not rooting for us. You're not cheering for us. We we get that. You don't want us to get ahead, right? And and even within our own, 
there is that sort of they see us sort of climbing and they're, they're trying to pull you down right that whole marxism uh right sort of with the rat uh right example right where they're trying to just pull you down right you know what i mean and and it sort of feels that way more so i would say here in the in the states because if you notice right that's one thing i mentioned about mexico even though you know they, they stole our culture and, and you know and are now running with it more power to them right they 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 ran with it the right way right like i always tell b right there's a reason why reggaeton became a movement right because it it was you know a lot of them right sort of doing it at the same time so it became a movement right when you have one person doing one thing it's not a movement right it's just you're, you're one spark right once that spark goes out you go out right or, or whatever you were trying to build goes out right so in mexico they actually are doing that right they are if you notice sikan and and darias and all these rappers, right? Anyone who has any name out there, they all collaborate with each other. They all have videos and songs with each other. And they're all sort of building a movement out there in Mexico, which is great. You look What's out right here there? in the States, you look out here in the States and you don't see that, bro. You, you know, see, again, you see everybody sort of in silos doing their own thing. And, and again, that, that's all part of that whole, yeah, trying to break up that, that mystique here in the States. So you know, part of having this discussion is that, you know, you're Chicano, I'm Chicano, and, and, and our, uh, Fernando, who's in, in the background here, he's Chicano, and having that discussion, right? And, and to emulate for others that we can have a discussion about these things so we don't have, because I saw in B, in that statement, in, in Arriba Mexico, pain. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, and as a social worker also, I said, you know, we've got to have that, that conversation, but let me go then to Coca and California. So some would say with, um, oh, you mean coca and marijuana. Oh, coca and marijuana, um, and marijuana yeah. right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some, some people, uh, first of all, the, the, the intro, the start of that, of that, of that, of that video, yeah. I just thought it was extremely intriguing. Right. But yeah. Yeah. what's interesting is that you, you have issues, you bring in nationalism, Mexican Chicano nationalism, you bring in religion, you bid in sexuality, you bring in, and you know, you bring in a lot of issues and, and some folks who I saw it, who saw it, who were very Catholic said, you know, it's kind of it's, offensive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's offensive. And, and, yeah. and why talking about why talk about drugs in that way? What, but it's a very dark um, video, but I've watched it several times, which was the point. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Exactly. No. So, yeah. Right. With coca and marijuana. Uh, again, one of those things where we're not again, we're not being offensive but we're also again not going to let you put us in a box i don't know if you were mexican and, and or chicano especially in mexico because when i would go to mexico to visit my cousins i got it from them mm -hmm. they used to sing this song those exact same lyrics Coca y marihuana. so I, I from a kid i, I learned it from them from a kid and i would i would come back over here or mom would take me to church in my head it was what my little primos were singing in back in mexico not what they were singing here in church right so for people to be like, oh, I'm offended. Like, so of what? Like, if you did not sing that song as a little kid, like, you did not have a childhood, right, in my opinion, right? So that let's just scratch that out the box, right? Because, again, we're not trying to be offensive. No one's trying to be offensive. But, the, again, it's, it's us saying, you know what? This song, right, has always been viewed as, you know, to your point, right, very religious and all of that. But from our perspective, it's just like, you know what? Let's just make it a dope track, right? Like, from our perspective, Every time that we have sampled anybody or we have used their beat, it is out of respect. It is, out, you know, when, when I sampled, you know, the, the, the beat from Dre to, you know, produce the Los Doyers anthem part one, right? Th that's out of respect. I love that beat. I love that, you know, producer. I love what he does. I'm going to sample his beat, right? And I'm going to use it and I'm going to put my own lyrics to it, right? So for us to use your beat or to use whatever, it's out of respect. That's number one. So the fact that we even considered you know, what they considered the melody of La Guadalupana on our track, again, it was out of respect. I, I'm a Catholic, right? I was born, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a practicing Catholic. I don't go to church every Sunday. But again, right, that's how with my mom, that's how we defend raised, La Virgen right? de Guadalupe. Yeah, 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 La Virgen, yeah, La Virgen de Guadalupe, right? La Guadalupana, that's that where that melody comes from, yeah. right? And so for us, it, it was out of respect, right? It was out, and, and again, it was just a, a beautiful melody to your point, right? How it starts, it was just like, Wow, right? Like we have to use this. We somehow have to but make you this partly, into a hip hop draw. And then, and really, that's all we had. And then everything you hear around it, the beat and all of that, that was created in ten minutes, bro. Like we just had that little sample of that trumpet, and then I just got on the drums, and right then and there, 
we created that beat and it was just like, you know what? It, it, yeah, we, we have to work with this. But yeah, it was not, you know, people say it's offensive. It's not, it's disrespectful. It's actually the contrary. It's, it's actually us giving props to La Virgencita, well, you know, yeah. I, 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 but, not something that, and, but again, if you know, it, listen to the track, we never mention her. We never disrespect Catholics or the Catholic church. Right. It's just the melody. So people just need to get over it. But, but Treco, I think that's part of art, right? That you're. Yeah, exactly. Something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I was taken aback. I have to, you know, I have to admit, you know, but we were challenged. And, and I think that was that was why I wanted to ask the question for people understanding to understand what that challenge was. Let's go to Cotorreo. You're in yeah. Colombia, um, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and, and you're promoting a lot of different artists in one yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell and me, again, tell, that, tell me about that. I mean, we every time we travel, bro, we try to figure out a way to maximize the opportunity, right? So if we go to Mexico to a tour, we we collaborate with an artist from that town before we get there, just so we could shoot a video while we're there. You know, so the same concept came to mind when we got hired to go to Medellin, right? We got hired to go do a show out there. I talked to the promoter. I said, look, while we're out there, do you know any artists, any, you know, anybody that gets down that we can work with? He said, yeah, I know this girl named Malaya. She's just starting. We, you know, you might work with her. I'm like, okay, so whatever. We talked, we talked, we had this beat in mind. I sent it to them in advance, but no one did anything with it, of course, right? But then when we got there, we did the show, and then we just ended up going to the studio after the show, just, you know, smoking, drinking, just chilling. And we put the song. And then everybody just jumped in and did their own little verse. Like I had no clue that I, people had actually written to it, but people went in there, did their verse. So again, it was one of those things where not planned. No one thought about it. It was just came together. We were in Medellin. You guys were there. We're there. Hey, let's all jump on a track. Let's do eight bars and let's see how it comes out. And that was the outcome, bro. Right. And, and again, it was one of those things. That, and that's why I love those things when they come out natural and they're not planned. And, you know, they're not because those things come out better. Right. Like that's why when we do music and we incorporate live instruments, we don't go into the studio knowing what we're going to do. It's just like we tell the tuba, go, like, do your thing. Like, here's the beat. Now, you know, freestyle it. And then we take from his freestyle and cut it and if, or if we hear something we're like hey that that do that do that but we never go into something with a pre-notion right so it was one of those things right with Cotorreo that we were in Medellin it was a cumbia of course that's where cumbias come from right Colombia it, it was just a perfect match and then Malaya came in there right so that she's the female in the video right to give you that eye candy and then you have the right beautiful that it was a mix right you see rappers from Mexico rappers from the United States and rappers from Colombia Medellin so first time ever, again, that there was ever a collaboration between Mexico, United States, and Colombia ever in one track, right? There's been other tracks where it's been Mexico, Colombia, but for all three of those to be in one track, just because we were all there that one night, right, as artists that got hired and we just all happened to collaborate, hey, it was one of those beautiful things. But Mr. B, well, it's interesting, Mr. B on that video identifies himself as a Norte Americano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did, North, how, 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 you know, Mr. B has Mr. That? B has this thing, right? That that he he right, and he's right, right? Like he he doesn't understand why Americans think that they're so like he North Americano, right? Yeah, you think continent, of North America, it's of, it's yeah. the con, right? It's all of us. It's there's no such thing as oh, you're like so. Yeah, he he like puts that out there. You know, Mr. B, he's an iron worker, bro. Like so, he deals with uh, even more racism than than I do. Right. Like in the fact that he deals with a lot of white folks and they're blatant about racism. Like if you walk into one of his restrooms, you see it right there on the wall. Right. Niggers and Mexicans. And, and they're working next to by, side by side to these people. Right. Like so Mr. B, I mean, he's not by all means. Right. I would say he's even less more of a when it comes to being, you know, because he Mr. B is Mexican in the sense that he was born in Sinaloa and brought here. Mexican and as a national. kid. That is exactly. He was born in Mexico. Is you know he has family in uh, uh, Sinaloa and Mexicali, uh, but and then he was brought here, right? So so uh, so he actually views and considers himself straight up more Mexican than where I take hold the title more of a Chicano. I hold that more to you know to the to the forefront. He holds it more to uh, as a as a Mexican American, of okay. course, but straight up born in Mexico. So yeah, when they offend him about, oh, you're not Mexican because you weren't born. No, he shut some real love. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was born in Sinaloa, homeboy, so shut the hell up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so two more, two more, two more uh, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good, we're good. Right? Don't worry about the time, bro. All we're right. good. I like the conversation. 
Excellent. Um, so um, when, you know, when, when folks are talking about your business, right, and, and it's interesting because you have 40 million um, views and people would say, oh, you know, they made it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, what does 40 million views mean? What is being able to buy? Because I, I bought a few of your songs on, on I remember in another uh, interview, you said buy you, them brother. directly and, and you negotiated your own deals. So you make mm -hmm. more money from, from, from the video. T yeah. Speak to some of the rappers who may be listening to us about building their own brand and business. You know, talk yeah. to other Chicanos, to other people of color, and tell them how they can avoid paying. Yeah. I hate saying attorney since I'm one, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I would say, especially in the music business, right? Because there's a whole, I see them on Instagram and everywhere, right? There's a whole lot of us, right? Especially in this industry, yes, right? Like you, at this point, social media has allowed any rapper now to now have the potential to reach a global audience, which that has never been the case. When we started, when I first told you about writing lyrics, right, back when I was in college, when we wrote our first song and had to promote it, we actually did CDs and had to pass out CDs at swap meets to get our music out. You I know what I mean? Like, and I, that, I yes, or cassettes, cassettes, right? It was, or a flyer, right? And we had to invite right. you to a party. We had to give you a flyer, right? Like, it wasn't like a social media thing where I could get on there and boom, like a flyer. It didn't exist, right? So it was hard work. So back then, a label coming to you and saying, hey, I could do all that. I could expose you and give you promotion and marketing, blah, blah, blah. It made sense. Now it makes no sense, right? Like now you can, if you have a little, I would say webbles and a little financial backing, your own, you can do it, right? Like you can do this on your own and you can put yourself out there and you can put yourself out there as you see fit. And if the folks like it, right, then they're going to react to it. And if they don't, then, Hey, you're going to have to reshift and, you know, re-strategize. But in this day and age, right, with YouTube and, and so Spotify and all these companies, right? Because, again, if you put up a video nowadays as an artist, right, if you own that channel, if you have the potential to get to a point where you have so many subscribers, you can monetize, right? So which is basically allowing YouTube to pay commercial to play commercials on your video and they pay you. I mean, it's pennies, but it adds up, right? Eventually, it's ad it adds up. And, and the more you grow, the more views, those pennies add up. Right. So and that's just one part of the, the oh, money okay. stream. Right. If you have gear. Right. We have gear. We're branding ourselves. Right. That's another aspect of, of the brand. Right. Then you have the music, the streaming, the downloads, the Spotify, all of that. I tell B all the time, like, we, you know, really to get into the, this business is probably the dumbest thing you can do, because if you think about it, we pay, we go into the studio and for us to do one song. It costs us about a thousand dollars. Once you cost, once you equate studio time, mixing, mastering, our time to go to the studio and write the, you know what I mean? Like once you equate all of that, it costs us about a thousand dollars to make one song, and then we turn around and sell it to you for ninety nine cents. Like no business will survive, right? In that, if, they, if right, most businesses will tell you if you're not going to sell your product at at least fifty percent the margin of what you paid for it, get out of that business, right? we would have to charge $2,000 for that one song. No way could we do that, right? So we're in a business where we, it costs us $1,000 to do a song and then sell it to you for 99 cents. But because of the other streams that have become available to independent artists like ourselves, we now could take those other streams and actually now see an actual income, right? Like you could actually now see where if you wanted to, you could actually, you know, start taking probably, you know what I mean? It, it could be a good, you, where you don't have to work anymore, right? Like, so, and that's the goal of any rapper, right? Any rapper, I don't care how little or how big, is to ultimately not have a job, right? It's ultimately have your music paying for, you know, whatever bills or whatever else you have, right? And so if that is your goal, then yes, I would con continue to tell every Chicano rapper or anyone who's in business, continue to do it on your own. It's going to, suck it's you're going to struggle right you're going to have to learn a lot of things on your own but once you get to this point where you are able to make the decisions to actually have the businesses call you right and not some record label because you signed a contract that basically gave i mean like that's what artists don't understand when you sign a, a, a an agreement with anybody a record label especially you right then and there right you are losing everything that i just talked about you just lost you cannot open up your YouTube channel. Now your record label has you under contract. So they, they, it's now your videos will be played on their channel. So you just lost any potential of earnings through YouTube. You just gave that up. Gear, 
You just gave that up. You cannot brand yourself, right? They own the logo now. They own you. So you, you cannot put up any shirt that they're not going to make money off of, right? They're going to give you the product to sell, but you can't make money off of it. It's going to be their money. They're going to give you a cut of it, right? The, the streaming and downloads, forget that. You definitely aren't going to get any of that money. That goes straight to the record label, right? Your artists nowadays, if you're in a contract, you make your money on tour. Well, who's touring these days? Right. Like, so these days it makes no sense, right. To be in some sort of contract with anybody. If you're independent, if you're doing it on your own, yeah, it's going to suck and you're going to struggle. But trust me, when you get to that point where you are actually seeing some dividends coming in and actually more than what you're putting out, all of a sudden it becomes worth it. Right. You see the light at the end of the tunnel and you will thank yourself that you did it on your own and you didn't make that mistake of actually signing on the dotted line thinking that that person was actually going to help you when all they did was take 90% of your profits, right? Like I tell B all the time, if it doesn't make sense with a C, not an S, if it doesn't make sense, it don't make sense. You know what I mean? It's just that simple, right? I, why, why would we give up anybody of our earnings just because you're going to offer something that we can do for ourselves? Oh, you're going to promote us? Oh, we can do that. Oh, you're going to market us? Oh, we can do that. Oh, you're gonna, you know, set up a tour schedule for us. Oh, we can do that. I mean, so, nothing so that a label can offer you can't do yourself. So that's what I would uh, put out there for folks. The, the the one of the most interesting things uh, uh, about the California in, in 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 finding the band was that you had an ideology, is that that it and you've described it in this interview. You know, do up and coming Mexican American hip hop or any band have to have that ideology, that message that they have to in order to motivate those who are listening to actually listen to the music? So that's the business side. What's the ideological side? I mean, the ideological side, I would say it starts with the name, bro, like De California. So right then and there. We're letting you know, right? Because well, you should know, right? But there's always been here in California this divide between the north and the south, right? Like Sorenos oh, and the Norteños, red and blue, right? Like there's even within our own peeps here in California, right? And even still to this day, it exists, right? Like that is our ideology, right? In the in a nutshell, right? We're trying to break that. We're we're the California, like no 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 no. We we're yeah we're from LA, but we're repping Raza and Salinas and Modesto, like. You're not going to put us in a box. Again, it goes back to us. Our ideology is to break every box, right? Like you're going to say we're Sureños because we live in L.A. and we can't somehow relate to Norteños. Uh uh-uh. We're going to break that box, right? We're going to give you cumbias and bandas that those people up there are going to be feeling, right? And we have a whole bunch of Norteños and NorCal people that show us love. So I know we're doing that. What? Us being put in a box about, oh, well, you're, you're Chicano rap, so you have to do somehow oldies or gangster mm-hmm. rap or do shit that, you know, Little Rob or Capone have done. Uh-uh. Like, like no. <laughs> you know, even our style of hip-hop is, I would say, you know, not what you would consider Chicano rap. Listen to the tracks that, I, well, this year, uh, you know, we're going to pivot a little. Not, I wouldn't say a whole lot, but we're going to pivot. Which goes that. to my next question about oh, what, go ahead, go ahead. about what 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 are your upcoming projects? And, and I want to give you the, the, the last word. OK, yeah, no. So upcoming projects, we have um, a club that's coming up. It's a single. Uh, right. But it's a it's a hip hop track and it's a club banger. Right. Where, where we would consider something that we would bump in the club. Uh, and then the follow up to that uh, is going to be a single that we have with Ceci B. Again, another hip hop track. Uh, what we would consider West Coast hip hop. So this year, right, we're going to, you know, every year we have put up an album and given it a theme, right? So uh, last year uh, we put up Banda de Muertos, right? It was an EP with five tracks. All of those five tracks had Banda elements in it. So we went with the theme of Banda de Muertos. Uh, The one I think prior to that uh, was on, um, uh, well, anyway, this one, this year is going to be focused on West Coast hip hop. We're probably going to, you know, the way we're sort of seeing things is we're going to go back to our roots. We're going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive than what people are accustomed to. It's going to be a little bit more in English because it's going to be more on hip hop, uh, but it's going to be more catered to the U.S. fan base that we have that asks us for more hip hop. You know, Mexico, they love us. They love the, the Spanish and they tell us to rap less in English. <laughs> but unfortunately, right, in the United States, 
And elsewhere, right, English is the predominant language and they actually ask for more English. So in this new album that we're coming out for 2021, it's going to have a little bit more English, hip hop, still going to have the traditional elements of tuba, you know, trumpets, banda, those live elements. But it's going to definitely sound more, uh, more West Coast and more, you know, more what you would consider, you know, definitely uh, on the Chicano realm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. we got a couple of video shoots that are coming up. Uh, also for uh, a couple of those tracks, uh, right? So yeah, man, we're, we're just keeping busy, right? I just posted a, something on Instagram yesterday, right? Talking about our strategy for 2021 is singles and videos, right? Singles and videos. So that's the strategy, right? We're going to drop singles, uh, right? And videos, right? For the next few months, because like I said, we can't tour. We can't really do the other things that we would normally be trying to do uh, around this time, planning some sort of summer tour. So, you know, if we can't do that, then we're just going to focus on what we can do, which is, singles and videos <laughs> right so um viewers we've been talking to to chueco from um um from de california they've got a lot of of great music uh, coming up thank you again chueco for for spending the time with us for articulating and oh, thank um, you guys man. Wish you luck. No, thank you guys yeah man anyone listening you can find us anywhere on the social platforms just look for the california and i'm sure we'll pop up but now but thank you guys for having us thank you guys for exposing our music thank you guys for liking our music that you guys even you know discovered it found us and we you know would be willing to interview us so gracias a ustedes gracias a toda la raza hey vamos a chingarle raza porque somos los mexicanos aquí so ya sabes <laughs>